تکمیل ندارم عشقا زلوم نست کم از نیل ندارم 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 از دست خود انجیل ندارم Thank you, Flory. That's fine. Well, um, welcome everyone to the British Museum. And many of you will know that this is one of a series of wonderful collaborations that the museum has been doing with Magic of Persia over the, these past years um, on, Iraq, on, on Iranian artists and focusing on artists whose work is represented in the collection of the British Museum. So I want, first of all, to say a huge thank you to Shirley Elranian for initiating this, this series and for all that she has done uh, over the years to support artists. Um, and she's been doing this assiduously for many, many years. And many of you, I'm sure, have attended these absolutely fantastic um, Magic of Persia uh, events. And here, the focus is on this amazing wrestler called Tahti. And Tahti was a Pahlavan um, and considered uh, the greatest contemporary Pahlavan of the modern era. He was not only a wrestler of enormous physical power, prowess, but also embodied the chivalrous spirit known as Javan Mardi. And I always thought that actually Khosrow embodied that spirit uh, as well. The box can be likened to a hedgeley the small personal shrines placed at the roadside that commemorates a loved one, often someone who has died in the service of their country and is considered a martyr. And of course, what this was about was the world of the Zorhane. And this is where wrestling takes place, as you all know. And one of my enduring memories was the Zorhane that I organized with my friend and colleague, Vesta Curtis, where we brought the Zorhane, would you believe, of Maid of Ale, to the British Museum. Uh, by 2002, uh, he, he always told me, oh, I want to go to Beirut, Beirut. So I found a gallery in Beirut, the uh, Janine Bey's gallery, uh, directed by Nadim Bagdash, who said, I love his work, let him come. At that time, there was no visa problem with between, and still there is no visa problem between Iran and Beirut. So he came and he loved it and he showed a lot of his works there. He did actually three solo shows in, in, uh, in, in Beirut on every two years. This is with uh, Nadim Bagdash, the owner of the gallery. They did the whole series of the Chador and Ashura series, which are sort of like monotype because each of them, they look the same as if it's a print, but in fact they are quite different because each of them he adds something, an element, a new element to it. And then <coughs> by... Um, uh, in 2002, the same year that he exhibited in Beirut, there was this serial, uh, a serial killer in Mashhad who had killed uh, um, 16 prostitutes. Uh, he was only 39 or something like that, but you will see it in the, in the film of Mazyar Bahori, who was here, an old friend of, of Khosrow also here. Uh, uh, who, so he wanted to give homage to these women, really, who are really do, do, doing the job they did uh, because they, they were in financial uh, need, and uh, so he gave them, he made them sometime bigger than nature, huge portrait of them that I exhibited later on in 2003 at the House of World Culture. These are, you can see the size, this is Khosrow who is already two meters tall, you know, he looks tiny next to this uh, portraiture that he gave, monotypes that he did of those prostitutes. Then he moved little by little to these uh, works that he wanted to do tiles. And uh, uh, with Arab singers here, you can see uh, uh, Asmahan, uh, uh, Sabah, Om Galsum. So all these uh, singers uh, who were in the book of Shant, Fayrouz, and so on. Shant did censors of them in Egypt. And he loved Shant's work. And he did the whole panels in ceramics with the Arab singers, but before that, it was also, as you could see before, the collection of Iranian uh, singers and dancers. Uh, Benisha asked me to name the top, uh, 
I'm sorry, the title of my talk, I said it's Khosrow Hassanzada, my friend, the war veteran, the uh, grocer, and the artist. So with Khosrow, what I found was that he wanted to do everything. And of course, as Rose said, until 1999, he had not left Iran. He did not know that much about Western culture. He had not experienced Western culture. What he knew was from the books, and he read so many books. It, he was like an encyclopedia. When I went to, you know, I was always priding myself about knowing Russian literature and French literature. And he had read Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Chekhov, Lermontov, whoever. And, you know, we were talking about that. And at the same time, when I was talking to Hosro, he wanted to do things. The first thing, actually, after maybe three minutes after we met, he said, why don't we write a script together? I was like, you don't know me. <laughs> I might be, you know, <laughs> might be a horrible filmmaker. I might be, you know, someone that you cannot you know, trust. But he wanted to do things. So for the five years that we had this intense friendship and cooperating on different projects, we did so many projects together. Uh, the last one that I show first is uh, the poster that Hostro did for my film, An Along Came the Spider, which was about uh, Saeed Tanai, the killer of uh, 16 prostitutes in Iran in 2001, and then inspired by, those, uh, by the film and inspired by uh, people's reaction to the series, uh, to the chain murders, he created this series of posters called Prostitute. In the beginning, I saw something very different uh, with Hosro as well, that even though he was not political, actually politics kind of made him uncomfortable, I, I saw his work really political. A few minutes presentation to cover Khosrow's remarkable life and work would leave much to be desired. Not that it would have daunted Khosrow the least, 
he wouldn't have allowed himself to be troubled by such petty reservations. Hostro, a larger-than-life artist and cherished friend, left a profound and enduring bond, not just with me, but with everyone he came across and interacted with. He was ever-present, supportive, and at your side. Never a naysayer, many projects that to others would seem as too forbidding, he would embrace the opportunity with open arms and indulge in the experience. Hosro lived in the now, making every moment count and special, a quality which I have yet to see in any other person. I feel that his enduring presence will be with us for a long time yet. Sharing life with Hostro involved constantly navigating crises. During these periods of sadness and melancholy, we took cover and sheltered from the outside world. Khosrow adored his children and was very committed to his family. He spent a negligible amount of his earnings from his art on himself. Everything that came in would be very quickly distributed to those around him. He couldn't help himself. It was almost as though he didn't feel right keeping any of it for himself. All he did ask for, though, in return was for his personal space and his freedom to create art. And for him, those were non-negotiable. He was tenacious about his work and uh, when he started a project, he would never stop until Tahesh Darbiyat. He got to the bottom of it and completed it. He worked a full day and his evening only started until everything was very neatly put away. He was changed and showered and had splashed on his favorite aftershave. But refreshed and satisfied, he was entirely available for what the evening would, would hold. Khosrow was clearly affected by the recent events in the country. And, in, and on our last trip this summer, despite so many pleas for him to stay on, he was anxious to return home to work on a project about celebrating the women, the strong women of Iranian history. He was honoring them in mosaic in the luxurious style of Byzantine icons. Khosrow venerated women and celebrated femaleness. He had been raised in a household of very strong women, his mother and his, his sister. As we can see, much of his art depicts his respect for women. He glorifies them as icons or shines a light on them when they're not seen. As any woman who wants to break out of the mold will tell you, it's not easy to keep true to oneself, but Khosra would not have it any other way. In fact, he insisted on it. He, I think he and himself are very much connected to what we would call the very human condition and I was thinking perhaps a very deep sense of justice underneath the humor, underneath the evasiveness, the absurdities, uh, and his ability to juggle reality with 
a sense of acceptance is also perhaps a very deep sense of justice. And I think for his passions and for his thoughts, we can give just a moment of silence at the end of this uh, incredible day of remembering Khosrow, just to remember him as a man and a vital force and an artist that he was and what he gave to the sensibility of being Iranian. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to our absolutely wonderful speakers, the ones who are here and the ones who are in Tehran. It's been the most extraordinary, uplifting day, and it is definitely time to go and celebrate uh, outside. So a huge thank you to you, Shirley, uh, to the Magic of Persia team, to my colleagues at the British Museum, to everyone here. And please, um, let's take away a the, the joie de vivre that uh, Hosro had. Thank you all so much.